and gentlemen. Already known, we are based in Austria. And uh, the team have been working on ultra-high ultra dilution research since the late 1980s. So it is age that brings us here. Oh, me, sorry, not you. <laughs> <laughs> My colleague is a former student of mine. And we worked there, we worked on high dilutions with tadpoles, with amphibians, and with wheat. And uh, we have issued publications and bibliographic analysis. I'm showing off a bit now, but uh, you'll understand why. And we found we still cannot really communicate with my mainstream scientists. They don't, they don't read what we publish. They don't accept what we say. <coughs> so, and other homeopathy researchers will have uh, found that too. So, high potencies is a tricky thing in homeopathy research, in research, and it uh, makes it very difficult to speak to outsiders or other people, people who do not uh, work on high potencies, in fact, or use them in practice. So we thought, let's start from another angle. Let's start with a similarity principle, maybe. You know, so much of homeopathy discussion, controversies, is based on potencies. So not why not start discussion and controversies on the similarity principle, that's not what I, what I intend, but why not have a, an understanding about uh, homeopathy starting from the similarity angle. So then we thought uh, we've done enough on high potencies, we start with low pot. we restart on low potencies. Yes, please. We have one here, but we need it for other purposes. You see that afterwards. <laughs> Thank you. It's not her job. It's not serving water to me. <laughs> <laughs> Corinne, Corinne is shy of speaking English in broad in broad audience. <coughs> I'm too, but I don't tell. Um, but she, she did all the experiments that we'll, we'll yes. present uh, this morning, or the main experiments here. Um, so she was ready to start with low dilutions and nothing to do with high potencies and witchcraft. Well, she then went to the high potencies too, we see. And we also thought we'll be able to control the model better than low potencies, not so many influences on the on the probes, <coughs> it would be easier to control the experiment, we thought. And we will be able to speak with mainstream scientists, we thought. So, also want to present to you Weitraut Shera Pongratz, our, my colleague from three decades, and you've been my, it's close to one decade now, <laughs> isn't it? Yeah. So, so, silver nitrate was where we started, and uh, the probes prepared were, now it comes in this, well, I mean, this is the best water control now. This, this water, water control? This is the dilution. Okay, <laughs> so this would be the water control one, then silver nitrate uh, three, 3E, the diluted, 1 to 1,000, it's a very low dilution, it's toxic, yeah? Uh, but non sarcast maybe you, it's prepared like just like that, from step to step, pipetted, and not sarcast. So, uh, one to thousand means that it is a toxic thing, and uh, and uh, wheat plants would di would die at that concentration. Yeah, and then the same concentration but with succussion. So we started to f focusing on three X, three meaning a potency of uh, 10 to 1,000 and four 10 to 10,000. And three X, three E, and four X of four, four E, we call that. Other probes 
like four, five, six, seven, and so on. And in, the, in this range, they are all toxic. Both the X probes, the succussed ones, and the E probes, the non-succussed, only diluted ones, are toxic to wheat germination. And uh, this is the setup with the wheat grains. They go into drawers, and the drawers go into rows. And we do not need a computer. We have one, but we don't need it for that. We need just the naked eye or glasses. You have glasses? Yes, no. glasses. Or glasses, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to, to, to assess whether there was germination or not. So there must be a certain standard in assessing that. And different members of the team must uh, be of the same opinion whether well, this one has germinated or not. And uh, to give you a short summary beforehand, both the X probes and the E probes are toxic to wheat. They reduce germination. But the toxicity is less marked in X probes, in the potentized ones. In other words, at identical concentration levels, the succussed probe is less toxic than the unsuccussed probe. So, uh, the question, uh, then, are we sure that uh, the succussed and the unsuccussed contain the same concentration of silver nitrate? And uh, this is a simple question, but it can cost you uh, months to, to find out your needs to address the question. And yes, this was tested by spectrometry. The probes, the X and the E probes, contain the same amount of silver nitrate, which of course is important. Eh? You, you may say, when you succuss, you have more dilution, you have more silver nitrate diluted or something like that. No, it's the same amount. And, well, yeah. So we, do, we didn't want to draw any false positive conclusions by, by laboratory mistakes. Uh, yes, at that point I should maybe start to, to speak about the topic here. Um, or the results. Uh, see the pairs, the 3E and 3X here, the 4E, the 4X, so the 5 and so on until 11. And uh, both are, they were toxic here, very much toxic, so the grains are dead here. With the 4E and X, you see there is a, a higher bar with the, with the solute, with the potency, and it's uh, very often it's the, the potent, the bar of the germination rate of, of uh, seedlings treated with, uh, the pot with the potency are higher than the uh, bars of the, um, some of the differences are uh, statistically significant. If you pool all the, the X ones and and contrast them to the E ones, they are statistically even highly significant. Uh, so it's amazing that at a, such a low concentration, you have a, an isopathic effect, obviously, or maybe. Well, this is a much more nicely done graph, and Corinne is expert at drawing such graphs. The water control, I'll go back to that, uh, this, this is the water control bar, which I put to 100% here. So you see, they are toxic up to 7x, 8x, but less toxic in the red bars, less toxic in the potentized. So this is, this is again the steps of dilution, 3 to 11. This is uh, water, inert water control set to 100%, this line. And these lines are the intoxicated. They refer to the intoxicated, uh, the germination rates of the intoxicated brains. Um, and you see there is the intoxicated one with the 3, 4, 5, 6 E, just the dilutions. And uh, the potentized dilution also is intoxicating, but less so. And Corinne continued that to 12x, 13, and so on, up to 18. 
you see the water control and the uh, there are real peaks with the potentized uh, silver nitrate. Well, this is well known. This is quite well known from from older studies, from Kulisko, from Pelikan, Unga, and so on. The high potencies, but ours is uh, say the, the low potencies, and we want to discuss that with uh, mainstream science. So there were consistent results in two laboratories in Germany and in Austria, and I thought. Present, presenting uh, video documentation taken in Ibiza, but we will not do that. Okay, <laughs> they realize the Austrians are laughing here. Okay, <laughs> okay. well, uh, when we want to communicate with mainstream people, then we would have to answer further questions. System stability, maybe in the laboratory it was warmer that, uh, that uh, it edge of the table and it was colder here or there. No, we found no gradients. We tested that. System stability is quite well. It's quite good. Or what else can we think of? Higher oxygen saturation. Of course, it's the, sarcastic, it's the oxygen saturation in the potency that makes the X probes uh, uh, to enhance growth uh, compared to the E probes. No, it is not. We compared succussed water to non-succussed water. And uh, the bars, the effect were really were alike. We didn't cheat on that picture. It's, it's true, they were really the same. So we can exclude the effect of high oxygen saturation. Um, did we check for confounding effects of different amounts of silica from the, from the glass bottle? No, maybe there is more silica from the glass bottle when you succuss and the, the silica. This is no glass bottle. There's no glass bottle. <laughs> we use Thank glass bottles. So, you see, we, I need, really need your support. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, if it, uh, if it uh, was uh, that, there would have been uh, more effect in the, in the succussed water than in the non-succussed water because the non-succussed Water uh, would yeah yeah would uh, contain less uh, uh, less uh, silica saluted from the glass bottle walls, but no it uh, th was the same effect. Well, I solution of silica can be expected in the prototyped water or not. So the final my final question would be. Was it the potentization? And I say yes. I mean, what do you, Corinne, what do you think? I think <laughs> yes. So. I think it is so, yes. <laughs> so uh, we would like to, to note down further questions on the issue from your side, uh, things we, confounders, we have not thought of, and things we should consider to strengthen the model. Okay, thank you for your patience. <laughs>